guys, it's currently 5.08 p.m. I'm starting my next vlog and I will see you soon. I'm actually heading to go swimming. Love ya. Swim time. Up in the morning, go to the gym. Maybe go swim for a little bit before my grandpa gets here. And then shower. Ready here. Tired. I'm very sleepy. Or an idiot. He's here on a stick. Sometimes I'm afraid for my life. Yay. La, la, la. I'm excited. <gasps> Puppers! <gasps> so cute. All the feels. He's adorable. Obviously, I just got to the pool. Um, clearly, I've trained my bangs, obviously. So, this is the result of going swimming with gel in your hair after like three days. Yeah, so it looks like you're like old and gray and fun. Anyway, I'm going to head up soon, put on my PJs. Ah, sorry, it's your nose. Have dinner. And then probably chill in my room for the rest of the night because I'm going to get up in the morning and go to show. So, hang loose, bro. It was wonderful because no one was here because it looks like it's about to piss down right at any minute. Woohoo. Oh, I have to paint my nails today, too. Blah. Um, I also have to put my guards for next week. So, yeah, that's more important, actually, than painting my nails. Yeah. Bye. Guys, on my way home. That was so nice. So nice, so nice. Him in the bathtub to see if he can swim. He drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. He drank in the bathtub. Idiots than a lunatic, and why it's more fortuitous than destroyer. No one man bested the other and had any real case to advance further up the card. He did remind me to buy that extension cable for the lounge, though, so seven. he's got the whole world in his hands. Having got the better of Wyatt in their steel cage sequel to WrestleMania, not even the other Beoths who made up the rest of the family were a match for the face that runs the place. Just as Cena attempted to escape, though, a small child nervously serenaded him by singing, He's got the whole world in his hands. WWE has done some genuinely creepy stuff in the past. This 
wasn't one of them. Number six, the Wyatt spied fire with water. The object of this Ring of Hell match wasn't to set one's opponent on fire, but to ward off Wyatt family members Harper and Rowan in a way that was vaguely more supernatural than a steel cage. Bray Wyatt was hyped prior to this in-ring main roster debut to be the new face of fear. Basically, that means... Join us. Number 33, WrestleMania 9. WrestleMania 9 was memorable in a lot of ways. It was the first Mania to ever be held outdoors, taking place in the lovely Nevada sunshine. It was also the first Mania to have a face-punchingly overt theme, as an ancient Roman aesthetic paid tribute to its Caesar's Palace venue. Sadly, it was also memorable for being one of the worst WrestleManias ever. This was the show where Vince and Co. took a huge step back, proving that they valued Hulk Hogan's waning star power over actual progress. Yokozuna beat Bret Hart for the WWF Championship before challenging Hogan, the most indestructible wrestler on the face of the planet, to an immediate title match. The Hulkster won in 22 seconds, making his opponent look like the biggest idiot ever and setting the company back many years in the process. This show also featured the worst match of The Undertaker's legendary undefeated streak as he faced the monstrous giant Gonzalez. The Phenom won by DQ after being knocked unconscious with a chloroform soaked rag. Yes, I mentioned that in WrestleMania 2 into a three headed monstrosity. The card was spread far too thin, meaning that none of the three live audiences really got their money's worth. In New York, non boxer Mr. E defeated non boxer Roddy Piper in a boxing match. and Joe Weller eats your heart out, Jack told me to say that. In Illinois, Andre the Giant won a battle royal including Bret Hart, Bruno Sammartino, Hillbilly Jim and a handful of very lost enemies. That match actually wasn't too bad and saves WrestleMania 2 from hitting rock bottom on our list. Number 31, WrestleMania 11. WrestleMania has always had a long history of celebrity involvement. From Mr. T tagging with Hogan at WrestleMania 1 to Floyd Mayweather facing Big Show at WrestleMania 24. However, with so the a downward spiral, Vince McMahon took a huge risk at the 11th installment of Mania, booking NFL star Lawrence Taylor in a main event singles match with Bam Bam Bigelow. Okay, let's get one thing straight. For somebody with minimal wrestling experience, LT surpassed all expectations, allowing Bam Bam to carry him to a shockingly okay match. Still, it can't really be considered a worthy WrestleMania event, and that's not Lawrence Taylor's fault. WrestleMania was a very good one. The aforementioned main event was a barn burner and the blueprint for another main event 10 years later. More on that shortly. The show also saw a fresh-faced John Cena defeat Big Show in an entertaining opener, Eddie retain his title against Kurt Angle, and the return of the Rock and Sock connection. It wasn't all good though. Remember the reception that greeted Goldberg versus Lesnar? Ouch. Number 10, WrestleMania 3. 80s WrestleManias are naturally less crisp and polished than their younger siblings, but they don't come more important than number three. Perhaps the most iconic pay-per-view in WWE history, this show saw 90,000 fans cram into the Pontiac Silverdome for a truly titanic night. The main event has since gone down in legend as Hulk Hogan slammed Andre the Giant and catapulted wrestling into the stratosphere. It also saw the first ever Mania Classic and a match still regarded as many as the best WrestleMania bout of all time. I'm talking, of course, about Ricky Steve versus Randy Savage, a match unlike anything WWF fans would have seen before. This tight opponent chairman ball. Now I know what you're thinking, that doesn't sound very good at all. That sounds like a fever dream you get after watching Raw and The Apprentice at the same time. Thankfully, the rest of this WrestleMania featured several excellent matches. John Cena defeated Shawn Michaels hey, in a fantastic main event, even if Yo, it did come slap back in the middle of that it's period, where Cena was the best in the world yeah, ever and I'm exhausted. The Earlier in the show, Undertaker and Batista, the first opponent in his incredible oh, streak of week, shows in Mania Bounce, so, which went on to so include so Edge, right Michaels, now. Michaels, Triple H, Triple H, I'm tired and don't feel That's like it. So I need to go for a single one of the greatest wrestlers of all oh, time God. and it began here. Number okay. six, WrestleMania 31. Um, 2015 yeah. saw one of the most I'm consistent again, manias in history, as every match indeed, ended up somewhere between yeah. excellent and I'm utterly just saying crazy. Some board probably, Sometimes both so at the same time. That. Nothing, oh. however, was outright bad. The main event threatened to be a disaster as Roman Reigns headed into his crowning moment of glory as the most hated man in WWE, WWE Chairman Ball. Now I know what you're thinking, that doesn't sound very good at all. That sounds like a fever dream you get after watching Raw and The Apprentice at the same time. Thankfully, the 
the rest of this WrestleMania featured several excellent matches. John Cena defeated Shawn Michaels hey, in a fantastic main event, even if Yo, it did come slap bang in the middle of that it's period, where Cena was the best in the world yeah, ever and I'm ready to match. Earlier in the show, Undertaker and Batista, the first opponent in his incredible streak of shows in Mania Bats, so, which went on to so include Edge, right Michaels, right now. Michaels, Triple H, Triple H, and Cena. I can go to the gym, I'm tired and don't feel like it, so I need to go for a single point. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time, began here. Number okay. 6, WrestleMania 31. Um, 2015 yeah. saw one of the most consistent manias in but history, as every match ended up somewhere between yeah. excellent and I'm utterly just crazy. Some board Sometimes both so at the same time. That. Nothing, oh. however, was outright bad. The main event threatened to be a disaster as Roman Reigns headed into his crowning moment of glory as the most hated man in WWE. I'm exhausted. Vince McMahon got what? maybe the best match it's of his career, losing to Shawn Michaels in a ridiculously really. fun street fight. The we most memorable spot saw HBK drop an elbow from a ladder through Vince, who was both laid out across a table and wearing a trash can over his head. Would your boss do that for the sake of entertainment? I think not. Edge was turned into a man so by Mick Foley, whether he wanted to or not. Really the rated R superstar had to overcome barbed wire, really contact, and a face full of actual fire anyway. to defeat the hardcore legend. But he so, did yeah. so. We also saw the first good women's match in Mania history, and it only anyway, took 22 I'm really tired of, oh, and by the way, these bags are the way, it's the Gucci. Controversial, and most importantly, <laughs> entertaining. This is also <laughs> the WrestleMania where Mysterio finally won the big one, and although it wasn't a great match, it was so, still yeah. a nice moment. It was also the scene of a playboy pillow fight between Tori Wilson and Candice Michelle, and although it wasn't a great match, it was still a... Um... I'm not sure the same sentence Tired. applies here. So number four, Lesnar's attempted murder by the only man who can kill Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar. Yes, Lesnar's terrifyingly botched shooting star press is the overriding memory of WrestleMania 19, but it shouldn't take away from how good a match he and Kurt put on. It was a true passing of the torch ceremony, even if Lesnar ended up rejecting the torch before accepting it again a decade later, you silly fickle sausage. Then you add Jericho vs Michaels and Rock vs Austin to the mix, and your chances of not enjoy this mania drastic go down. Hulk Hogan also battered Vince McMahon in a street fight, a clash of maybe the two most important men in WWE history, it doesn't get any bigger. Than that. Number 2, WrestleMania 30. Mania 30 was WWE's ultimate happy ending. Daniel Bryan, a relatively small internet darling, proved everybody wrong, defied Vince McMahon's classic superstar model, and defeated some of the most sport entertainment -y sports entertainers to become champion on the grandest stage of them all. Sure, Bryan's triumph wasn't the biggest shock ever once he was finally given a path to the main events, but for much of the build-up, his day in the sun looked like it would never come. Despite raucous popularity, WWE did not not seem keen on pushing D. Bry at all. Thankfully, they eventually saw sense and had him defeat Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton all in one night. This may broken, did you? Enter Brock Lesnar, who demolished The Undertaker with three F5s, plunging the Superdome and the wrestling world into devastated silence. It was a heel victory done right with devastating effect. Number one, WrestleMania X7. Wow, I feel silly saying that. It's a shame that the best WrestleMania is also the one with the most extreme new metal name, but I guess nothing's perfect. Actually, despite being the best mania of all time, this show was decidedly ragged around the edges. It carried all the scruffy, hardcore charm of the Attitude Era, imperfections which came together to make the whole thing even more compelling. This show had it all. Another chaotic TLC war, this time featuring cameos from Rhino, Lita, and Spike Dudley, a wild backstage brawl between Kane, Big Show, and Raven, the latter of whom almost cut off power to the entire show while trying to drive a motorized buggy. Benoit and Angle brought pure work rates, Vincent and Shane brought the sports entertainment, and Undertaker and Triple H brought something in between. The biggest match, however, was Austin versus The Rock, the second and finest of their WrestleMania triple header. In a match often cited as the end of the Attitude Era itself, Austin shockingly aligned with Vince McMahon. In the build-up to the match, Stone Cold had warned The Rock that he'd do anything to win the WWF Championship, but nobody expected that. The only downside of such a shocking, amazingly contested main event was that it literally couldn't be followed. Austin's heel turn and the purchase of WCW meant that nothing was the same again. The Attitude Era was over, and the wrestling industry has never hit such heights since. Still, at least when the bubble finally burst, it did so with a bang. So that's Aye. most importantly, don't forget to enjoy yep. WrestleMania and join us. I think it might be bedtime. Just saying. I'm gonna end my vlog. Bye!